Have you ever been so distracted by something that you missed seeing what was right in front of your face? Like the time that I had just graduated from college and had started my first job as a temporary secretary. My first assignment was to deliver a memo to a coworker. Easy, right? So I walk into the office and there is an Adonis sitting on the other side of the desk. <laughs> he was the most distractingly attractive single man I have ever seen in my life. So on the inside, I'm having this reaction, like one of those cartoon characters when their eyes start bugging out of their head and the smoke's coming out of their ears. You guys, drool literally almost came out of my mouth. So I'm focused on playing it cool. I walk over to the desk, sit the memo down, turn to walk out the door, and bam, walked right into a wall. Real cool. Now, unfortunately, I lived a lot of my life like that. I was so distracted getting things done, caught up in the rat race of life, that I missed seeing what really mattered that was right in front of my face. It took another wake-up call to open my eyes. Two months after my son was born, it was like a neurological autoimmune bomb went off. My legs started to go out on me randomly. There were days that it felt like there was an elephant on my chest and I'd get dizzy and couldn't breathe. I had chronic pain shooting up and down my spine and into my leg. And at one point, I was almost put on a feeding tube because it was hard to eat. I lived for over a year with a bed in my living room so I could watch other people take care of my kids. Well, I went to doctor's appointments looking for answers. In the beginning, I didn't know if I was going to live or die. And once I did know I was going to live, I had no clue what my quality of life was going to look like. One day, I was feeling particularly sorry for myself as I looked out the window and watched a normal, healthy mom playing with her kid and giving her a normal, healthy childhood. And I looked over at my daughter, who was coloring on a bed in my living room. I said, honey, I am so sorry that we can't go out and do things like we used to. This has got to be so hard on you. She just looked up at me, totally confused, and said, Mom, it's OK. I like it. When we used to go to the park, you were always working around your phone. And now we actually talk and hang out. That was a sucker punch, because she was right. When I was healthy, I was so distracted by life that I missed everything that mattered. Eventually, I did start to find answers, and I slowly regained my quality of life. But learning to live again wasn't just about managing symptoms. To really live, I needed to learn to see and hear the people who were all around me. And that was the first step. Anytime I started a new project, or even when I'd walk into a room, I had to train myself to slow down take a breath, and focus on the people who were right in front of me. As I did that, I noticed something really interesting starts to happen. Because when people feel seen, they naturally open up and start to talk. And if you'll get curious and ask questions, so you can really hear what they're saying, people are not only willing to talk, but they will feel validated and appreciated simply by being heard. When you really start to hear other people, what you will find is that we all have our own personal genius. And human beings really are the world's greatest natural resource. When we engage in collaborative discussion with an intention to really see and hear each other, the solutions we come up with together will always be better than anything you can come up with on your own. And when we invite people into the process of creating and implementing solutions, we all get a lot less distracted by and caught up in problems, and we get a whole lot more efficient at actually solving them. To lead like you were dying 
really is as simple as slowing down, taking a breath, and focusing on what really matters. So the next time you're about to start a meeting, take a breath. The next time you're about to start your next project, slow down and take a breath. Before you press send on that email to your really annoying coworker, slow down, <laughs> take a breath, and focus on the people involved. What people really want, what they really need, is to be seen, to be heard, and to know that they matter. It's no surprise that a recent study found that 92% of employees who identify themselves as being highly engaged at work were those who felt seen and heard in the workplace. And 74% of those employees reported being more efficient in their jobs simply because they were heard. My daughter reminded me of the importance of slowing down and taking a breath a few days ago. After getting her permission to use her story today, thank you, <laughs> she looked at me and said, Mom, your talk was awesome, and it's going to be great when it's done because you're starting to suck at listening again. <laughs> Life is full of distractions, but it is also short, and it's vulnerable. So let's all just remember to slow down, take a breath, and focus on the people who make this life worth 